All set. Uh, great win. Uh, great win for the program. Uh, I think a great win, uh, ESPN representing university. Uh, uh, just a fun time. Couldn't ask for a better outcome. Uh, and just a tough, talented team in Mizzou. A team with a lot of parts. Uh, a team that plays hard, a physical team, could make plays. Uh, we got down eight points, and it just we just showed who we really are. A team that's built to be successful, a team that's built to fight. And I, I thought we played the way we were capable of playing on both ends of the floor. And I think from a fan standpoint, that's what you want to see, a talented team coming here and try to compete and win a game. We did that. I thought Joe Nell did a really good job of rebounding the basketball, keeping balls alive. He probably had five or six balls he had his hands on that went out of bounds. And he, it was just a case of Joe Nell was not going to let this team fall. Uh, even when we got down 80, continues to make plays, a little fatigue because they running bodies at him, two or three guys boxing him out. He continued to keep those balls alive. And uh, I thought our guards did a good job defending. Uh, you know, Pressy's one of the fastest guys I've seen, you know, uh, since I've been around a long time. But not only fast, but a good player can make plays. I thought we did an exceptional job now. He ended up with nine assists, but I thought we did a really good job. Outside of the first maybe six minutes of the first half, I thought we did a really good job of forcing him to, to make plays as opposed to getting assists, even though he had nine. But I thought we did a good job of buckling down and not allow him to, to let their offense flow where five guys are getting involved in him. They're making plays, and then all of a sudden it could be a long night for you. Uh, you know, Joe McCray kept his composure. I thought he rushed a little bit in the first half. In the second half, I just kind of told him to settle down, allow the offense to come come to you. Because even though y'all leading score, we felt like Jarnell had the advantage uh, to make plays. Uh, and he did a great job of making plays, keeping balls alive, being aggressive, rebounding, accepting their challenge on the defensive side of the ball. I thought Trey Golden did a good job. Josh Richardson did a good job trying to stop pressing, which is not an easy thing to do for a guy that's 6'5", going a quick guard like that, that makes move. He got screens, he's coming at you full speed. Just, just a tough matchup. You haven't seen that before, and, and you don't realize how fast he is until it's in person. Uh, but hats off to our guys. You know, eight out of the last nine for two straight years. Uh, that says a lot about the character and the toughness of a team. To win four games on the road, four at home, just to continue to compete. When you're sitting there, I think 11 and 10, 10 and 11, something like that, and to fight the way these guys have fought down the stretch of a season. Uh, the Trey Golden to bounce back from where he was in two years now to where he is now. Uh, Jordan McCray, who moved from a you know solid role guy to an elite player, in my, my opinion, the SEC player of the year. Because you're talking about a guy that has to go from a point when Trey was struggling and went down to wing the two, to score the ball, to try to rebound, to try to defend. I just think it speaks volumes for a guy that goes from, like I said, just an average player, you know, coming off the bench to where he finished up. And his team wins 11 games. Uh, I just think his value and the work he's put in, his commitment, uh, and I think he's the guy. But I don't, I don't have any votes when that comes, comes down to it. But just a great, great team win. Uh, fun to be a part of it. If you guys ask me anything about the NCAA, I mean, I, I thought we were an NCAA tournament team. We were talking about 68 teams, we won them. But you got to do your job. But I think the job is done. Now it's you know, the next phase for us to go try to compete uh, in a tough SEC tournament uh, in Nashville. But as far as the NCAA tournament is concerned, I, I feel like the work was done. I think that just solidified. If you look at resumes of, you know, teams uh, and the work and the, and the things we've done to put ourselves in a position. At this point, it, it's, it's no use to not even not try to mention the NCAA when you're about to play this game. I mean, you, it's out there. Everybody knows it, so you just go with it. Well, the thing I said to our guys in the emphasis of the day yesterday, we give an emphasis every day, and it was just do or die. Bottom line, do or die. Uh, because the stage is set, I mean, there's only, you know, I can say so much as a coach, any type of rah-rah speech and all that, but at the end of the day, if you don't have it in your blood in an environment like this, then you're on the wrong team. Uh, I mean, the atmosphere presented itself. you got a great opponent coming in here and you're fighting for something. Missouri's a very talented team, a well-coached team, have a lot of parts. They were fighting to win a basketball game. We were, so to speak, fighting for our lives. And that's the difference when it, when, it, when it gets down to it, down the stretch of a game. And I said they didn't want to win. I think we were fighting for a little bit more. Uh, we got down eight points. I told the guys, here it is. We got to make a decision right here. We got to start building off stops. It can't be a back and forth game. And anytime you have a point guard that talented that can make plays and he keeps those balls alive, you don't want to press the late game when they got a seven, eight point lead. It could be a long night for you. And I thought our guys did a great job of making plays on the offensive side of the ball and getting the stops we needed. Probably kind of mentioned do or die. Did you have to maybe reapply that message? 
I just say, here we go, guys. Here it is right here. But I think whatever time, much time it was, here it is. We got to get it. I thought Chiefs did a good job coming. You know, one thing about Quentin, he's a better, he, he made that three-point shot, but he is a good three-point shooter. Uh, but because of, you know, Andrews early in the season, you have him at the fourth position. So everything with him is around the post now as opposed to, you know, shooting his three-point shot. But he can make that shot. That wasn't a surprise to me at all. He can, he makes those shots. Uh, but I thought he did a good job accepting the challenge. He plays a physical brand, and that's his style. So he wasn't phased by that. He, he comes in to compete. He's ready to go. So it didn't surprise me at all. Without a doubt, we're a good rebounding team as well. And the thing we talked about is they're the best rebounding team. Then let's see, because rebound is toughness. Then let's see if they're the toughest team. Now, you just put it from that standpoint. And then John Nell accepts that challenge. You know, Kenny Hall and the guards accept that challenge because they rebound the basketball. I mean, their big guys do a good job, but they, their guards do an exceptional job of rebounding as well. So our guards have to be ready to rebound. And we, we wanted that game. I mean, from a rebounding standpoint, the two things we had to do is a tremendous job of boxing and rebounding and also corral and pressing. When he's pushing that ball in transition, I thought we did a good job in those areas. How important was it to, I mean, think about for just scoring, and they're such a good scoring team. How, how important was it to make this a 64 to 62 game instead of an 80 or something? Well, the, the thing about it is they scored the ball. They're, they're the type of team when you watch them on film, they can get up to 80 points. And then you have to get 81 in order to win the game. Uh, and that's how they play. So for us, it was really executing our offense. We had to make it a physical brand. We had to cut and move. I just think when you shoot quick shots, off-balance shots, and they get rebounds, they're down your back. It could be a long night. We had to go through Jornel in order for us to get this win. I thought we did a great job of getting him the ball, whether he was scoring or not, but allow him to make plays for us. Because if they don't double team, he's one-on-one, -on -one, and we felt like that was an advantage. Oh yeah. Outside and oh yeah. You know the, the the two game the two games before this one, I thought we we weren't very good defensively. Georgia, give Georgia credit, and I didn't think we did a good job in that game. And I thought at Auburn, we felt like the game was in hand. We didn't play with a level of mental focus. Uh, but in this particular game, the guys knew and understood. And the thing I talk to them all the time: you can't go into games on a roller coaster. You got to be locked in. You have to know your defense is this every night. This is what we'll do defensively because shots come and go. But we got to do a better job. And I thought that. Previous two games, we didn't do a very good job defending, but I thought tonight we were locked in. But not surprised at all. Uh, not really, because I know, I know we can do it. Well, you know, I was 50 50 on starting Kenny Hall, not necessarily because he's a senior, but just because of the size and the way he's been playing. Uh, I, I went with what we were used to. You, you win seven out of eight games, you go with the flow. Not that Armani was playing bad, but I just. There was one advantage for those guys out the gates. I felt like that might have been it because of Bob's experience, his size, and his mental approach. Uh, he did a good job. You know, nine points in six minutes. If he didn't get those two fouls, who knows where he'd have been. So, but I feel like you know Kenny, Kenny was ready, even though he backed door Kenny early. Kenny was locked in. Plus, it's also physical presence. You mentioned McRae, but in that final stretch of the last eight minutes, did you say something to him about you know when you score, you got to score, you got to get as fast as this, or did he treat that as a result? Well, the thing about it, 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 you always want them to score. I mean, with, with Trey, Jordan, Jordan, you always want them guys with the mentality to score. But in his case, I thought he was rushing shots. And he, he had a couple off balance where he was trying to get fouled. When I mean, you got big physical guards on the side of the ball from a zoo, they get in front, he has to be able to go over the top, get around, set screens. And really, he has to be a decoy sometimes. You got to be able to set a back screen to get a guy to lay up. Then it loosens up the defense. But if he's not screening, he's standing. Well, those guys are physical guys. Now you got to everything becomes one on one. Then it's tough. But I think I just tell them allow the offense to come to you, set screens, catch and shoot, then attack the closeout. And he did a better job in the second half, late in the second half of that. Coach, what does it say about your team now? Obviously, the SEC is coming up, the NCAA is going to come up after that. To win a tough, hard fought game like today was against a good talent team, what does that say about your team? Well, I think we have a level of toughness. Uh, we got a tremendous level of togetherness as a team and a family. Uh, and that's, that's also the other reason why you win eight out of the last nine. You have to come together as a team. You got to figure out what's more important. Uh, is it the W or the, or the stats or the individual stats? And uh, 
our guys are more consumed with getting Ws. Because uh, there's no fun losing ball games. Uh, and even in those losses, I mean, earlier the season, I, I didn't think we were a very tough team. I, I really didn't. I, I thought there were a lot of areas we had to improve, scoring the ball, defending, every, you name it. But we got better and the guys stuck with it. So it's really a credit to our guys to stick with it and making a decision that they want to be good as a team and they want to put the time in. So you have to give the credit to the guys for being locked in and want to be a successful team. Two more. Coach, winning um, eight of the last nine like you did last year, and, but then you see the SEC tournament last year with losing to Ole Miss, what do you tell your team – to make sure, you know, this doesn't happen again, or is it kind of something that's unspoken because they know what happened last year? Well, you know, the most important thing, and I, I try to stay off, you know, what, what happened in the past. Uh, the most important thing is to win the game that's presented to us, uh, play a certain way, compete at a high level, whatever the scout report, whoever the opponent is, but not get consumed with, well, man, if we don't lose this game, you walk, you're out there. Because like I told you guys, win or lose this ball game, win or lose, it's over. You can't go out there hesitant, second guessing, doubting. Everything is a home run shot. I mean, a home run pass. Just play the game. You turn it over. You turn it over. But you, but if you defend and you play hard, you give yourself a chance. And that's the thing we talk about. It's not necessarily we got to win one more game. We got to do this. I mean, we. I think we're an NCAA tournament team. And our goal is to go try to compete and win an SEC tournament. It's the most important thing. First team is presented in front of us. Get game plan. Try to win the ball game. Conzo, you lose uh, Jerron Mark to start the season. You develop Jordy as you talked about. Is this one of your more satisfying seasons to this point as a coach in the way the team adapted to what happened and the players stepped up? Well, they all satisfied. Even, well, no, I shouldn't say that, but that, that 11 win season at Missouri State, that, that was painful. But, I mean, you, you always get something out of a season, especially when your guys are committed to being successful. You know, um, and, and that's the one thing about these guys. They want to be good. But sometimes it's a level when when I pick up the information coaches give me, how much do I want to listen? Uh, and then you figure out, man, that actually works. You know, and that's for any kid, you know. And that's the thing I think with our team. It was it was uh it's one of those deals you, you kinda in denial when Jerron Maiman is not playing, it's like, well we can do it without him. Well there's an adjustment period because that guy brought a level of toughness to your program. Uh, and now all of a sudden, you know, Jordan McCray had to go from that role he was playing into a star's role. Trey got back to his star level. John Dell became a star. So you got guys that stepped to the plate when it was time, but it was hard early because you, I mean, you got a guy that, it's not like Jerron graduated. He's a part of your team. Now all of a sudden in the back of your mind, well, he'll be back, he'll be back. Well, didn't come back. Those guys stepped up and did what they had to do.